Campbell Island has been home to the Hiltzuk for over 9,000 years. But it was just over 200 years ago that Spanish and European explorers first sailed into McLaughlin Bay, dramatically changing the life of both cultures. In 1833, the Hudson's Bay Company established a fort here, which they operated for 10 years. During this time, a village began to grow around the fort. In 1866, a small store was built where the old fort had once stood. It was operated by various traders until the early 1900s. Soon after, the Methodist Church came and built a school and mission house. Within two weeks of their arrival, both buildings had been completed. This was the view of McLaughlin Bay in 1885, as the SS Otter made one of her regular stops to drop off passengers and supplies much in the same way as the Queen of Chilliwack does today. When you visit McLaughlin Bay nowadays, you'll meet Hillsook native Frank Brown, who runs the Sequest Interpretation Center. From their miniature longhouse, Frank and his wife Kathy helped to introduce people to the life and history of the Hillsook. My name's Frank Brown. I'm a member of the Hillsook First Nation from Bella Bella here in the central coast of British Columbia, Canada. We provide services to the visitors that get off the Queen of Chilliwack in the uh, mid-coast area here. The services we provide are uh, ocean-going canoe tours, we have an interpretive center where we sell arts and crafts, and also we, we have a little campground here, and uh, we have a water taxi business where we run sea kayakers out to the uh, outside beaches. And well, the reason why we set up this venture was as a means of employment and economic diversification for our community. What we want to do is provide a historical and a cultural context for visitors as they pass through the territory. And through providing this service, we hope that it will be a more meaningful experience, one with more depth and deeper understanding and hopefully a deeper appreciation of the, the local people and specifically the First Nations because this is our homeland and we believe that it's, um, it's important to create understanding between First Nations and the general public and that's one of the primary things that we're trying to do here is to get past the rhetoric and the polarization between First Nations and the general public and, and develop a relationship of reciprocity through uh, understanding. By the late 1800s, the town had grown to over 300 people and was becoming overcrowded. Unable to expand any further due to the surrounding hills, it was decided that the town be moved two miles north to its present location. Bella Bella is the largest community on the central coast, home to over 1,500 people. Accommodations and services are scarce in Bella Bella because it's mainly set up for residents and fishermen. While tourism could help provide much needed jobs, it could also disrupt the rhythm of life the residents here have grown accustomed to. The band council wants to approach tourism in a controlled and cautious manner to make sure that it doesn't affect the environment. The present day challenges facing the Hiltzuk are a combination of over 9,000 years of cultural development and the rapid changes brought about over the past two centuries.
The SeaQuest Interpretation Center gives people a unique opportunity to leave the ferry and to row to Shearwater using a traditional Hiltzuk canoe. This hour-long paddle trip gives insight into what life must have been like before the arrival of Europeans in the late 1700s. The community of Shearwater is home to approximately 50 full-time residents who have chosen the beauty, isolation, and freedom they have found here. During World War II, Shearwater was home to the Royal Canadian Air Force. The town was used as a base for flying boats, which patrolled the coast watching for submarines. The old plane hangars now serve as a marine repair shop, one of the few along this coast.